previously on Peek a Boo's journey. After Benny the Bunny broke Esther's heart, the only way to stop the pain was to adopt her own bunny and name her Peek a Boo. Esther made over the top purchases, then got on a ferry and brought her home. Peek a Boo's litter box was too small and she peed everywhere, but the stinky spray fixed it. Esther bought a hallway rug and Peek a Boo did many pinkies and zimmies. Esther bought another carpet and litter box so Peek a Boo could free roam in the living room. Esther made Peek a Boo a bunny bed, but she ate it. Welcome back to Peekaboo's Journey. This is her week five update. But before we go on, I just wanted to clear a few things up. Firstly, I've done a bunch of tests on Peekaboo's hearing and it turns out her hearing is really, really good. No, Peekaboo, hey. It's just when she's zoned out like grooming herself or eating, she just does not hear when I'm coming into the room. Also, I got a few people asking me to get a larger litter box and I totally did that in episode two. This litter box is double the size. People were also concerned that it wasn't good for her paws, but like I said, I put down a little mat so that her paws won't go through and she's just doing fine. So she actually does not like to eat hay in her litter box. And I know that's a little bit weird, but she she has not touched any of the hay in the hay bag and I put hay on a tray for her inside there. She doesn't touch it. So I took it out and encouraged her to eat it on her little cardboard mat that I made her and she eats it there all the time now. She just uses her litter box to just go do her business actually and it's really really cute. Sometimes I'll go into her room and she is nowhere to be found and of course she's in her litter box just doing her business. Hey baby, what you doing? Doing your business? Sorry. And it's really, really cute because sometimes I will hear like little plops happening in there. And after that, she just leaves. She does not spend more time in there. So I really don't have to worry about her paws. I've also been feeding her a lot more alfalfa hay. I don't give her unlimited alfalfa hay or pellets. I do give her unlimited Timothy hay, but she does get quite a bit. I give her an eighth of a cup of alfalfa pellets in the morning and then an another eighth of a cup at night. And I give her like six small handfuls of alfalfa hay throughout the day. Um, I just like to use it to keep her busy. I will take small handfuls of it and put it in her little hidey spaces around her room, especially at night. She really loves that. One night I did that and then I could hear her doing biggies and zoomies because she was so happy. So she doesn't exactly love Timothy hay, but sometimes she'll go into a frenzy and eat it like crazy. But if she had the option between Timothy hay and alfalfa hay, she would totally choose alfalfa hay. 100% of the time. But I don't want to take her off the Timothy hay because then it might get difficult to put her back on when she's an adult. So every now and then I will try to encourage her to eat her Timothy hay and it's so cute. Eat your hay. Come on. Eat it. Eat some more hay first and then I'll give you your pellets. Good girl. Come on now. Good girl. Stop pretending and actually eat something. Good girl. Go eat your hay. Eat your hay. Come on, eat these little guys. Hey, hey, where you going? You got poop stuck on your butt. She is definitely growing. She's pooping a ton of pellets every day. She definitely looks a little bit bigger and I'm noticing like the fur around her face is changing and she now has like these eyebrows and they're so cute. Sometimes when she curls up in a ball, like she's so tiny, her body's like the size of my hand when she curls up into a ball. And then when she's sprawled out, she's like super long. So it's kind of like confusing me because sometimes she looks so tiny to me and then other times I'm like, oh my God, you're huge. So I wanted to mostly share today how I've been bonding with Peekaboo. It's been difficult at times. In the beginning, she didn't want me petting her at all. 
only when she was a bit sleepy I could maybe get a few pets in. She did allow me to kiss her though. She found my face non-threatening and I think my kisses reminded her of grooming from her sisters and her mom. So, so I've been giving her a ton of kisses. But finally, I just decided I'm gonna dive in and I'm going to pet her and massage her. So one day I just went in and I gave her a bunch of like really nice head scratches. Okay, I'm going in. We are doing this. And you're gonna love it. She's been loving it ever since. I'll do it like at least a half a dozen times a day. And in the middle of the night, I always wake up to go pee. So most nights I will go in and just check on her, give her like about half an hour of just pets. And I've been waking up around six or seven. So she is not really alone for more than a few hours at a time. And of course, during the day, I'm with her all day and she's now ready to free roam throughout the whole house. We got her another carpet for the living room because I was laying down all these towels and it was just getting ridiculous. So I finally got another carpet and she really loves it. So I learned somewhere that when bunnies are feeling pleasure, they don't exactly purr, but they like make this sound with their teeth. It's like teeth chattering or like a little bit of grinding and it means that they're really enjoying what you're doing. So I've been really enjoying when I pet her and she makes those sounds, it's really, really exciting for me because it's helping us bond more. And so I tried to record some of the sounds. It's so, so cute. Like sometimes she will chatter them like so fast, like ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> It's really, really cute. And it just makes me feel so good that I'm bonding with her and making her feel so good. She also really loves when I blow on her fur. So I tried that once because her ears felt like they were really hot and I just wanted to lower her temperature a bit. So I just started blowing on her ears and she just loved it. So I noticed because I've been giving her so many kisses, I've been leaving behind my face oils all over her head. Ew. And I didn't like the way she was looking, so I tried one of these grooming wipes. I did try it on her once, uh, a full sheet, and it was too wet, and she went crazy. So what I do now is I just cut a little piece off, and I've been removing the excess moisture with a paper towel. And I have these cotton gloves that I use when I wash dishes as a liner for my gloves. And so I have been wiping her with this wet nap, and then with my cotton glove just wiping the excess moisture off her head, and she loves it now. She loves it so much. I only do it once a week because even though they are gentle wipes, I don't want to like use it too much. And when she grooms herself, she does get her ears pretty good. It's so cute, but she doesn't get like the top of the head where a lot of my like oils and stuff are. So it's been good just to like wipe some of that off and just make her look all fresh again. <laughs> So of course we've been both doing hand feeding since day one and that's always the easiest thing that you can do to bond with your bunny, I guess. Bye. I also saw on Morgan's channel, Sincerely Cinnabon, to try and lie down and get low to their level and maybe sprinkle some treats on your body and see if they'll jump on you. So I tried that once with my leg, like in the second week and it was a really, really cute. Okay, we're gonna try bonding exercise. I'm just gonna... Wait here with some pellets on my leg. <laughs> Let's see if she clues in. Look what I got. I got pellets. Follow your nose. Oh, you smell something, don't you? Where are you going? Oh, come on. Turn around. I'm supposed to be patient, so I'm just going to sit here, not move, and wait. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. She's scared. <laughs> that's a start. That's a start. Good girl. I haven't tried my body yet, so we're gonna try that today. 
So I don't know if it's because every time she was chewing on her hay house, I would wake up and come into the room, but she has stopped doing that and I feel bad, so I didn't know what to do. I wanted her to still have that to keep her from getting bored. So what I do is I turned it upside down and of course immediately she just was all excited again and started chewing on it. So I decided, okay, there's some stuff in her room that she just ignores, so maybe I'll move it around. And of course, as soon as I moved a few things around, she was interested in it again. And also her kitty scratch pads, I decided to put them together and move them up against the radiator. She really loves sitting up against the radiator because it's warm. I decided I would just take some double-sided tape and stick them together and now she just like splutes on it and it's so cute like oh my god I love it so much but I did notice that she's been starting to chew on the corners which is fine I guess but I didn't like that she was chewing on the part that's printed so I did rip those off but it's just a really great spot for me to like give her her massage and pets every day but it's kind of interesting because every time I come into the room and get low to pet her she will actually run up to the kitty scratch pads and assume position she knows that as soon as I touch her like she's gonna get a really good massage and it's really really funny um, also because there's been so many changes with the new carpet and everything she is getting so distracted when it's time to do her binkies and zoomies so there might not be any binkies or zoomies this week sorry guys <laughs> Sweetheart, you want to do some binkies and zoomies? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go try and put some treats on me and see if she will jump on my body. Maybe for Maddie. What are you doing? Stop it. 